It is day three of Mental Health Awareness Month, and what we're gonna be talking about today is a lot of people ask, why are people more depressed, more anxious than ever before? And part of it is the platform that we're currently on, which is YouTube. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, sometimes what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community and talk about them. And one of my passions is mental health. Even though I'm not a licensed therapist or psychologist, I am somebody who has had my own personal struggles, and I do a lot of research and reading and trying to understand this thing. So, if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And yeah, so we are going to be talking about the YouTube algorithm, kind of explaining how it works, how it's affecting our own mental health. But this topic has just been on my mind since I just finished the book by Matt Haig called Notes on a Nervous Planet. So like I said in the intro, there is a question. There is a question of why are people more anxious, more depressed than ever before? This book, this book by Matt Haig was so good and I I can't even begin to put it into words like so a lot of this book is about the anxiety we have in the modern age a lot of it has to do with technology and just the way the world is right now but he does so many like he does so much like explaining good solutions for this thing but the way it's written like you can feel you can kind of feel that anxiety because he like kind of like spitfires these lists of certain things that are making us anxious. I, I listened to the audiobook, so maybe that's why the experience was a little bit more, like I really understood what he was saying by this stuff. But anyways, check it out. Matt Haig, he's an amazing author. Follow him on Twitter. He's on there all the time. He's a cool dude. Um, but anyways, notes on a nervous planet. I'm gonna link it down in the description below. Excellent book. But anyways, what we're gonna be talking about today is the YouTube algorithm. And this is one of the reasons why our mental health is being affected. Now, I'm a YouTuber, I'm on the YouTube platform, and what I, what I want you to remember, and we'll circle back around to this by the end of the video is, there is a solution, but in order to get to the solution, we have to acknowledge the problem, all right? So anyway, something that Matt Haig talks about is how not just YouTube, but social media as a whole, it keeps us in a bubble, okay? And it's, it's a tricky situation for all of the social media platforms. Like, I'm of no delusion, like the social media platforms are gonna stop doing what they're doing, or we're, we're gonna go backwards in time and stop using them. Um, there are some things that social media um, platforms are trying to do to kind of help the situation because they still need to make their money, but they also don't want us going insane. Um, I'm gonna make another video about the Instagram like situation. But anyways, the number one goal, the number one goal of any social media platform is to keep you on their platform for as long as possible, okay? Why is that? Why is that? Well, most social media websites, whether it's uh, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, they make their money. A lot of it comes through advertising, okay? With the amount of time that we're spending on social media, advertisers, big companies, they might as well put their ads on there. We're not watching TV the same way that we used to, but we are on social media. So the longer each platform can keep you on there, the more ads that are gonna get in front of your face. But what we saw with the Mark Zuckerberg, uh, you know, in front of Congress, what was it, last year? Like, these social media platforms, they are learning us, they're learning our behaviors, they're trying to understand us, okay? And this this is uh, another thing that, that requires balance. I know a lot of people, you know, hate how they're tracking us and doing that. I do think some of it is a little too far. But here's the philosophy I have when it comes to the advertising, is this. Is like, I remember being a kid and watching like uh, shows or even just being a teenager. I think a teenager is a better example. Watching shows and they would just show me commercials that had nothing to do with me, right? The way I see um, advertising like YouTube ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, I'm like, at least you know what I want to see now, you know? So at least I'm like somewhat interested and now I can make the decision on whether or not I buy it. But YouTube in particular, and I'm a YouTuber, I'm gonna let you in on some of the dark secrets, all right? As a YouTuber, 
our goal is to figure out how to get our video in front of people who are going to like this video, right? And the three ways that we do that is the YouTube title, the YouTube description, and the, uh, the tags, okay? And we put in as much information as possible, or at least I do, some other YouTubers who are doing, you know, the quote unquote best practices. We're putting as much information in there as possible to get it out to other people. Like a lot of you have commented on my descriptions. Sometimes they're a little, you know, wonky or whatever it is. A lot of that is just for the algorithm, all right? But here's the thing. When you combine that, when you combine what I'm trying to do as a YouTuber, and what YouTube is trying to do by keeping people on the platform is that YouTube is going to keep recommending things that you like, all right? It's going to keep recommending you YouTubers who are in that same niche, in that same genre. But this can be very dangerous for our mental health. And here's why. It creates a bubble, okay? It creates an echo chamber. And the, one of the biggest issues that all of us struggle with is, and it's, it's part of human nature, it is part of the human experience, is that we are constantly looking for people to agree with us. That beautiful thing called confirmation bias. So what's happening is, is although YouTube is just trying to keep you on the platform, show you more um, videos that you like and that you're interested in, one of the issues is, is that it keeps giving you the same information over and over and over and over again. And I don't wanna be extra about this, but, but it's kind of brainwashing us, all right? So it keeps recommending you videos about a certain topic, and this is where commentary channels like myself and others, I feel that we, we have a responsibility to have more of an opinion, um, more of a discussion on our channels, especially if it's a trending topic, we need to really put ourselves in there, right? Um, and that's just my uh, my opinion, right? Because I understand how the YouTube algorithm's going to work and something that I have to do when I'm going to com uh, do some commentary on things happening in the YouTube community or in the news or culture or whatever, I have to sit back and I have to ask myself, understanding how the algorithm's working and how I've been watching videos that are all agreeing with one another, I have to sit back and form my own opinion, okay? Because this is one of the issues, is that without even realizing it, a lot of us are not forming our own opinions. I made a video about this a long time ago about crowd psychology, all right? And it gets to a certain point where we keep getting the same information over and over and over and over again, and we quit thinking for ourselves. We're in a time right now where I feel personally, just by watching human behavior on social media and everything like that, I feel that we're in a time where we have less independent thinkers than ever before than ever before. And this is one of the reasons I believe mob mentality is such a thing. So again, the solution is to be aware of this, to be aware of the situation. So like, what do I do personally? When I'm researching a topic, I try to look for multiple sources that don't have anything to do with each other, all right? I wanna see both sides of the opinion. A great example is Last night, um, there was some news, and I was thinking about making a video on this topic. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, because I want it to be a surprise if I end up doing it. But anyways, there was a topic. Um, I started seeing people talking about it. I was forming an opinion, and then I did some more research, and I found an, uh, a different opinion. I was like, oh, okay, you know? And I kind of was able to sit back and form my own opinion on it. And now I'm debating on whether or not I even want to make a video on that. But the last thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to keep bringing this up until November of 2020, like we are in the political season again. I remember, I remember during the last election how confused I was, how I was so confused. I was so confused by the results of that election, okay? And that's when I realized how social media was keeping me in a bubble. Like, to anybody that was trying to get out of outside of their bubble, try to look at other people's opinions, other people's points of views, and things like that, the results were not that surprising, right? But for me, since I didn't understand what was happening to me, and all I was doing was sitting in an echo chamber of people who had the same political opinions and views and everything like that of mine, I was completely caught off guard. So something that I've personally done is I follow media outlets, uh, news outlets, uh, social media people. Like, it's not because, it's not always because I agree with them, 
but I want to hear what's going on outside of my bubble. I want to find out why there's so much disagreement, even though we're all working towards the same goal, which is a better world. You know what I mean? But we all have different opinions or views or perspectives on what that better world is. So I just really want you to think about this stuff. Think about how YouTube is keep recommending you the same videos and over and over and over again. What are you doing to step outside of your bubble? And last thing I'll say is this is one of the reasons why I talked about people like Joe Rogan and Russell Brand sitting down and having a conversation together, all right? But anyways, again, Notes on a Nervous Planet is such an amazing book by Matt Haig please do yourself a favor and go check it out. I'm gonna link it down in the description below. All right, but anyways, let me know your thoughts on this. Do you feel that you're in an echo chamber? What are your thoughts on social media and how it keeps you in your own little bubble recommending stuff that you're already interested in and not giving you another perspective? Let me know. Let's have a conversation down in the comments below. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to help support what I'm doing on this channel and get involved in our monthly Q&A and all that good stuff, click or tap on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.